Hello viewers and welcome to News and TV. I am Makanaka Masenyama. The story is making the headlines. US bans Army General Sanyatwe in the courts. Fumira approaches High Court for bail despite restriction in business. Mutulindube's budget breaks into $16 billion in sports. Aston Villa move a dream come true, says Makamba. News in detail. The United States government has slapped former Commander Presidential Guard and Zimbabwe's ambassador designate to Tanzania, retired Lieutenant General Anselim Sanyatwe, with travel restrictions for his role in the killing of six unarmed civilians last August. Sanyatwe was in charge of the Presidential Guard on August 1 last year when government deployed the army into the streets to quell a violent demonstration by suspected MDC supporters who were demanding the release of presidential results two days after the general elections. Zimbabweans will have to fork out more in electricity tariffs after Finance Minister Mtulinkube announced a 300% increase in rates in his mid-term fiscal policy review presented to Parliament on Thursday. Ngobe told a joint sitting of the National Assembly and Senate as well as President Emerson Mnangagwa that tariffs for domestic electricity consumers will with immediate effect be increased from 9 cents to 27 cents per kilowatt hour, a 300% increase. Non-exporting businesses will now pay 45 cents US dollars for a kilowatt hour of electricity. ZESA will also be allowed to bill exporters in foreign currency as government seeks measures to help the power utility get back to sound footing. Zimbabwe is facing its worst power crisis with citizens forced to enjoy a crippling 18-hour load shedding schedule. Public Service Minister Sekain Zenza has bulked to pressure and agreed to table the National Social Security Forensic Audit Report to Parliament. Nzenza told Parliament that the report, which has since resulted in the arrest of Tourism Minister Priska Mfumira, reveals deep governance flaws at the patient's administrator as well as the corruption that ripped it apart. I would like to say that what has emerged from the forensic report is that there were a number of irregular elements relating to corporate governance, ICT, human resources and the way investments were managed or for that matter mismanaged it is our role as custodians of pension contributions to ensure that we do what is right by those who have entrusted us Opposition MPs last week called on Speaker of the National Assembly, Jacob Mudenda, to charge Nzenza with contempt after she continuously snubbed demands to table the report, even after Mupfumira's arrest, with charges drawn from the same forensic audit. MDC President Nelson Chamesa on Thursday failed to turn up for commemorations organized to remember victims of last year's August 1 killings despite having promised to attend the function in the poor neighborhood of Highfield. The event was organized by visually impaired cleric Bishop Anselmo Magaya's Zimbabwe Divine Destiny Church. Chamesa's head of security Washington Gaga was at the Highfield venue with his team early in the morning as an advanced team but Chamisa inexplicably did not show up. On Wednesday, MDC spokesperson Daniel Molokele told journalists that Chamisa would attend the commemorations in honor of six victims gunned down by the military on August 1 last year in Harare after protests broke out in the capital with suspected MDC supporters demanding the release of presidential election results two days after polls closed. The opposition leader was last year castigated for describing the decision to protest as stupid in a gaffe that he was later to apologize for in the courts. Barely a week after being committed to remand prison under a hitherto unknown section of the law that prohibits application for bail for three weeks, embattled tourism minister Priska Mfumira has approached the High Court seeking relief. Mufumira was arrested and charged with criminal abuse of office last week and Prosecutor General Kumbere Hodzi tendered a certificate classifying the cabinet minister's case as a complex one. Acting Chief Magistrate Munamantum Tevedzi ruled in the state's favor and locked up the first serving cabinet minister arrested for corruption. However, despite the ruling which effectively barred any court from entertaining her, 
bid for bell for 21 days Mufumira through her lawyer Charles Chinyama now instructing advocate Louis Uriri approached High Court Judge Justice Erika Ndewere seeking bail. The application was however not heard after the state indicated it had received the application late and intended to acquaint itself with the papers first. In business, Finance Minister Mtunin Klube has revised the government's 2019 expenditure figures upwards from $6 billion to $16 billion, signaling a supplementary increase of $10 billion, probably to factor in inflation and the move to designate the local currency two months ago. Ngobe, in his mid-term monetary policy review Thursday, indicated that the Office of the President and Cabinet that originally got $295 million will now get an extra $500 million to bring the total to $795 million. The Minister of Agriculture was in November last year allocated $989 million in getting an extra $3.4 billion. Another big beneficiary is the Minister of Public Service, which initially was allocated $81 million and will now receive a further $1.1 billion. Surprisingly, the Minister of Primary and Secondary Education, which received the bulk of last year's budget at $1.13 billion, received a paltry $362 million as supplementary finances. The struggling health sector, which originally received $694 million, has been allocated an extra $507 million to bring its total financial outlay to $1.2 billion. Many people have been asking me how did I manage it because they could see that everything was uh, there, everything was just uh, happening, people, things were being paid. So I told people that uh, it was through the diaspora funeral cash plan. So I would advise everyone to join this uh, diaspora funeral cash plan. Their policy is good because it took all the weight off my shoulders. We end with sports. Zimbabwe international midfielder Marvelous Nakamba has described his move to Aston Villa as a dream come true after joining the English Premier League side from Belgian side club Bruges on a five-year deal reportedly worth £11 million. The 24-year-old midfielder was officially unveiled as an Aston Villa player on Thursday to finally put an end to the speculation surrounding his future after reportedly going on strike at Club Bruges in order to push for a move to the Premier League. In his first wide-ranging interview with the Aston Villa official website, Nakamba said he was delighted to complete the move to Villa Park as it has always been his dream to play against some of the world's top players who plied their trade in the prestigious league. Aston Villa manager Dean Smith said Nakamba was a valuable addition to the team due to his attributes and experience. Reporting for NewZimbabwe.com, I am Makana Kamasenyama. For this and more stories, visit our website www.newzimbabwe.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel, NewsMTV.